hey what's up everyone and welcome to this course on redis search so in this course we are going to see what is redis search and what are the different functionalities of redis search and how it is helpful for us to create a robust application we are going to create a search engine where we are going to add all the data and from that data we can search any of the data within the system so that's what we are going to build today we are not going to build any ui but this will be an completely backend application so if there is anything that interests you then let's go and start our application now first let's understand redis search so what is redis search so redis search is a system which allows us to do the searching of the data now if you don't know that redis provides a different sets of data structure to store our data if you are not aware then i have a dedicated course on that as well if you are interested you can check those courses as well i will link those courses in the description for you to check out so redis allows you to store the data in the hash format as well and the json format as well so if you want to store in the hashes that also you can do and within the hashes you can store the data within the key value pair and within the json you can directly store the entire json object and you can traverse through the json with the different paths available okay so that's how you can uh, store the data in the json and hash format but if you want to do any searching on that if you want to fetch data from those particular data structures then redis search provides you the functionality to search from those particular data so that's the basic understanding of the redis search and how redis search will do this is based on the secondary indexes so it will allow us to create the secondary indexes and it will also allow us to do the full text search so whatever the text we want we will be able to do those text search the most important part and most powerful part in redis search is that it will do the searching based on the rankings that you provide so whatever the indexes that you will create you have the capabilities to provide the scores so based on the scores the search will be happen within the system using the redis search one thing also it does is it uses the stemming so what stemming will do is so suppose if you provide one a word that is manage so what redis search will do is redis search will do the stemming operation on the manage and it will try to search all the data that matches a particular word so if you have just given the search term as manage but using the stemming operation redis search will give you the data that will have the manage that will have the manager that will have the managing and all those similar words so this way stemming will help us to fetch the data in the efficient way so we don't have to worry about implementing any functionalities which will get the data of the similar words redis search will give us all those functionalities by default other than that it also provides the functionalities like aggregation so if you want to do any aggregation operations that also provides suppose if you want to get the data like if you have a application for a blog post right so if you have multiple posts for the different categories and if you want to get the data like for a particular category how many posts are there and how many views are there so those type of data if you want you can get those data those are the aggregation operations that you can do and similarly you can do all this all the different aggregation operations and within the aggregation there are different functions available like count sum average all those aggregation operations are available so you can easily do those operations and you can fetch the data so you can see that there are a lot of functionalities within the redis search so you can easily implement what are the functionalities you need with using the redis search now when to use redis search as we already know that redis works on the principle of in memory data right it will try to store all the data into in memory so wherever your application needs to do a quick searching and all those data you need from the in memory uh, for a quick search then you can implement redis search in your application all the data will be stored in the in memory and quickly accessible for you to do any search but if you have very large or very huge amount of data like in terabytes and petabytes then probably using different type of structure would make more sense because storing that much huge amount of data into in memory doesn't make sense so these are the applicability for you to implement redis search in your application so now how redis search works redis search works on the principle of secondary indexes so what it will do is whatever the data that you have as we already spoke about earlier like you can store the data on hashes and json everything but now redis search gives you the functionality to create the indexes on the hash and the json so if you have lots of json stored in your redis db then for all those json you can create the indexes you can create the indexes and with that indexes you can define like for what particular keys you need to create the index suppose i want to create the indexes 
on all the keys starting with a particular prefix you can define a prefix based on that prefix it will create the indexes and you can also define for this prefix what all the fields that you need to create the indexes so once you define all those fields it will try to create the index on all those fields and in the all those fields you can define like this particular field I need as a sortable or not this particular field I need to exclude in the index or not those are the different operations that you can use while creating the indexes one thing is if there is any modification that you need to do in the indexes currently there is no way to modify the index you have to drop the index and recreate the new indexes so that's the way that we will be doing the indexes and once you do the indexes you will try to do the search on the indexes that you create ideally if you have seen in the relational database what we do is we have the the tables and on those tables we create the indexes but we try to fetch the data from the table itself but here in the redis you have the data you have all the key value pairs stored as a json or hashes on that hashes you will create the indexes and on that index you will try to fetch the data from that particular index itself so that index will internally will indices all those data and will try to store in the in memory for us to fetch quickly so that's how internally redis will handle the data for us and we can quickly access all those data so in this video we are going to see how to install redis tag in your machine i would recommend you to install redis tag using the docker because that's the best way and easiest way to install redis tag either you are using mac or linux or windows install docker in your system and then run a one command to install redis tag easily in your machine so if you have not installed docker then just go to docker website and search for docker install and just download the docker engine for your particular platform if you are using mac os or windows anything download the docker desktop and install in your machine it would be easily installed and once you start the docker once the docker is completely installed in your system and then we can go ahead and install the redis tag to install the redis tag just go to the redis tag install redis tag and run redis tag on docker so this is what we are going to do you can go ahead and install redis tag on your mac using the homebrew as well and you can directly add your libraries on your linux machine as well but my recommendation would be always using the docker so i'll show you using the docker let me go to the run redis tag on docker and you can see you are getting the command to get your image and get it started running so we will be using this one this command where docker run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name that is the redis tag and you can see you are seeing these two ports over here that is the 6379 that is the port of your redis tag server and 8001 that is also exposed that is the port for your redis inside so once you install this you will get your redis server as well and redis inside as well both should be downloaded and installed very easily so just copy this command and go to your terminal and run this command that is docker run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name that is the name of your image that is redis tag and two ports you are exposing that is the 6379 for your redis tag and 8001 for your redis inside and the image that you are using is redis slash redis tech latest and you can see that i already had that image in my machine so it, it didn't download it but if you are doing first time then it will download the image so if i see docker images i should be seeing that image you can see i am seeing this redis tech image and if i see docker ps you can see that image is started as well okay and now if i go to browser and if i open localhost colon 8001 you can see that redis inside is open you can directly configure you just have to enable this i have read and understood the server side public license you can go ahead and enable the analytics or encrypt sensitive information as well whatever you want to do but this is all fine and click on submit and your redis inside is started and it also connected to your redis server okay currently you can see that there are no keys available there is no data available in your database but it is ready to go ahead so this is how you would be installing redis server in your machine either it's windows or mac or linux
Now there is a Redis cloud also available where you can leverage the cloud functionalities of Redis stack. So I'll show you that as well how to register to the Redis cloud and how we can get the six months of benefit to using the free tier of Redis stack. So let's go there, just search with Redis cloud and I'll click on Redis enterprise cloud over here and try for free. I will add this link in the description below directly so you can go to this link directly it's very simple redis.com slash try free okay and here you can see that you are getting all the information that you can get the 200 dollar coupon also so you can use this for six months so the coupon code is tiger 200 okay all the information is available here directly to get the redis cloud up and running so from here what you need is you just need to log in with your account or create a new account i'll be logging with my google account so let me just log in with the google account here let me click on sign up with google and i'll be just logged in you can also go ahead and log in with your github or google or you can create your account as well so let me just sign up with google so once you log in here you can see that you will be in this particular screen you won't be having any databases added these are the databases that i have added okay all the subscription i have added you won't be having any subscription so what you can do is you can go ahead and you can go to the billing and payment and here you need to add your payment details you can see that i have already added one card so you need to add your credit card information over here once you add your credit card information you grab the coupon code from here that is the tiger 200 just get the coupon from here and go to your credit section and add this particular coupon here and apply your coupon will be added you can see that i have already added this coupon so it is showing that you have already used this coupon as you can see that recently only i have added this coupon and once you add this particular coupon after that what you can do is you can go to the new subscription and you can choose any of the subscriptions that you have you can see that currently i have selected this sub subscription that is the 100 mb for seven dollars per month okay this subscription i have added which allows me this money information and once you once you add this particular subscription once you create the subscription all the subscription you will get here you can see one subscription that is a free you can get that is of 30 mb only data and this is the 100 mb data that i have created the subscription using the billing and payment using the credits that i have okay and what you can do is you can create multiple databases that you want okay so what as i created only this one database let me just delete this database so i can show you okay this would be the default one for you okay there won't be any database added so you, what you can do you can just go ahead new database and you can add the database you can see i'm adding dcb main that's the database name and then you can see you have to select what type of database you want to do as we are using the redis tag we will be using the redis tag over here and then durability that is high availability and the data persistent do you want data persisted or not okay suppose i'm doing snapshot every hour so every hour the data will be snapshotted and what is the eviction policy how the keys you want to be deleted so i'm just keeping the default that is volatile lru and if you want you can enable the remote backups as well so when you enable report backups you have to give the amazon s3 bucket url so whatever whatever the bucket you have created you can create a bucket in aws and give that backup destination over here so it will be backed up over there make sure that it has a proper permission as well because without permission it won't be able to do so for more information you can read over here you will get all the information it's very easy to set up i don't want any backup so i'll just make it off here and here you can see that you will get the security information you will get the default user and you will get the password information from here and if you want only your database to be used from the allowed ip address that also you can add using the cidr allow list you can add all the ip addresses over here all the cider information okay all this information you can see that everything you can configure over here and once this is done you can go ahead and activate the database within couple of seconds your database will be activated and once you create the database you can see that you will get a public endpoint so this is the public endpoint you can use to connect to your applications and after this what you can do is you can do all kind of things over here you can go to the data access control and you can create multiple users which all users you can uh, create and those users only will be able to use your database you can also give certain roles you can give certain that is acls all the information you can give over here you can see your account usage 
account information over here you can you see the usage reports as well how much data that you have used all the information you can see here and whenever you want you can create a new subscription as well so there are multiple subscriptions that you can create the only thing is that 200 dollar will be used with those subscription and that is valid only for six months so make sure that you utilize redis cloud that's a really good platform and all the things has been handled by the redis cloud you don't have to worry about anything doing manually everything is handled here the other thing you can do is how you can connect this application okay so what we can do is i'll show you the thing that how to connect so if you go to the databases and this is my database you can see that this is where my free tier database and this is my subscribe database okay so i will go here i will go to my redis insight and with this redis insight what i can do i can add redis database i can add the host information so i'll just copy this I will add the host information you can see port number database everything is added username i don't have to add password i will add so what i'll do i'll go to my database i'll just copy the password from here i will add the password and add that is database you can see that database has been added i can directly go here connect it and i can do all the operations over here okay it's simple easy to connect to your database as well and it is very easy to interact with your cloud database using the redis insight so make sure that you are utilizing this redis cloud make sure that you are using this coupon code that is the tiger 200 given over here so this all information is available for everyone this is in the redis website as well available redis cloud website so if you want i can share this link with you as well but if you directly search with redis.com slash try free you will be redirected to this website and all the information is given over here okay we have not done anything special here so let me just walk you through the redis insight and how you can utilize the redis insight and what are the different options available in the redis insight so if you want to go ahead and use the redis insight separately as well if you don't want redis insight with your uh redis stack version then also you can download redis insight and you can connect to any of your redis stack database so if you have your cloud versions available right so if you have your cloud uh, redis cloud database and you, that you want to connect with your redis insight that also you can directly do so for that you just have to install the redis stack separately you don't have to download the redis server and redis insight that i shown you earlier so just search with redis insight and go to download section and just fill all this information and give your operating system whatever you're using i'm using mac os m1 so i'll just select this and i will download it if you're using windows or linux anything you can select that particular and you can download it so click on download to get the redis insight and just normal whatever the, the installation process is for your operating system that's a simple thing that you have to do so i'll just drag and drop in my application and as i already had it you can see that it's asking me to replace so i'll just replace it search for redis insight and just open this and you can see that your redis insight is open and you can see directly connected with your local redis okay so whatever the local redis you had installed with, with the docker it directly connected with it and if you want to add any other redis database you can go over here that is add redis database and you can give your host information port information the name of your database and the username and password so as if you are using the redis cloud you have the username and password there you will get those information just add those information and connect to the database so let me just log in here you can see that you are going to see the same information that you are seeing over here okay same information because it is connected to the same redis server so you can see that here you will be able to see all the keys all the data available in your redis server and this section will let you see all the values of the redis database and there is one great feature available in the redis inside that is the redis workbench here you can see that this redis workbench will allow you to perform any queries over here for your redis stack and you can see the data and it also allows you to see how to utilize or how to do all those queries for all the redis stack components available so if you want to work with the redis time series database and if you don't know how to work with redis time series and how all the queries are there it will walk you through the complete step by step process to do that so just click on introduction you will get complete introduction 
click on next you can see that if you want to create or delete a time series just click on it and you can see that you are getting the complete query as well okay so this is the query you can see that ts.create and you can see that you are getting a proper commented section and everything so here what it is doing is it is trying to create a time series okay so the command is time series that is the ts.create and here you can see that this is the key name for the time series okay sensor one is the key name and we are creating with the label so you can see it adds a label that can be either string or numeric values and what is the label that is the area id 32 and what is the region that is the region is so you can see we added the two labels over here that is the area id 32 and region as east and we are creating one time series so if you just run this you can see that you got the result okay that means you created the time series if you want to get the time series information you can get the time series information this way that is ts.info and the name of the time series that is a sensor one that we created okay so if i run this you can see that i'm getting the data that is the sensor one this is the query that we did okay there are two queries available right so if you see ts.info sensor one so for this this is the result you can see total samples available memory usage first timestamp last timestamp retention time all those information you can get for your time series whatever you created using this command and the other command that we executed was to get the query index so it will give us the name of the time series itself now if you want to manage data endpoints if you want to add the data we can add the data this way okay so ts.add that will allow you to add the data and in which particular key we need to add the data so suppose we need to add the data in our sensor one okay and what data we are adding we are adding a timestamp that is at which particular time we want to store the data and what data that we want to store i will show you this in the browser so i can zoom it a little bit okay let me go to the workbench time series introduction next add okay i'm showing you here just so that i can zoom a little bit okay so this is the ts.add sensor one and this is the data that you are storing if you want to add the multiple data you can use the ts.m add command that is the multiple addition of data points where you will pass the name of the key and then data that is the first timestamp value then again key name and timestamp and value star means current time okay and if i execute this you can see that all the data has been added and if you want to read the data this is the query to read the data you can see that ts.m get filter with area id 52 this will return the last sample okay so whatever the last timestamp would be you will be getting that timestamp so if i execute this you can see that you are getting the last timestamp data this is the last timestamp added and this is the value for that particular timestamp from the key sensor one and if you want to update the time series you can go ahead and update the time series like this is the value ts.alter sensor one that is the key name this is the timestamp which you want to update and give the new value simple it will update the data okay you can see it's executed you are getting the okay as well and if you want to delete you can go ahead and delete as well you will get the command for delete as well that is ts.delete sensor one and you will pass all the list of timestamp that you want to delete and if you click on next you can see that you can create the rules as well so if you want to compact any data right as we talked earlier like in time series you can aggregate the data you can compact the data as well so if you want to create such kind of rules you can create the rules from here you will get the example this is the example and similarly you can create the rules for your application okay so this is just the example a walkthrough for you to understand the concepts understand everything so you can go through each and every thing over here how to get the filter data from the label how to filter data from the values okay filter data from the timestamp all those information you can see you will get from here and this way you can learn all the commands in the ready stack if you want to learn about graphs then you can go ahead and learn about the graphs as well okay you will get all the information how to create the graph delete the graph how to create relationships everything okay so this is the best place to learn all the redis commands and all the functionalities of all the components of the redis tech. so whenever you get any doubt about anything you can just come to workbench over here and you can get all the information over here and suppose 
we want to create the document right so let's go to the introduction let's go here let's create this and let's execute this and you can see that everything is executed okay and if you come to here over, over your key and if you refresh here you can see that whatever that you had created till now all the data is available over here so you can see that you created a couple of hashes you created one time series data so if you click here you can see all the details available over here okay this is for school 2 this is for school 3 and this is for time series for time series data you cannot directly get the values here so you have to query only so you need to go through your workbench and you need to query that directly okay so this is just the overview of the redis insight it's a really powerful tool so you can just go through the redis insight and you can explore all the things available now once you have installed redis stack which will have the functionalities of the redis json and the redis search and also you have installed redis inside we can go ahead and see what are the different commands available for the redis search and how to create the different indexes so here you can see that i have opened the redis inside and you can see there are a lot of data is available right and i have already preloaded the data here so we can easily go through all the commands available and i will show you as well what are the different commands so let's go through the different commands here so you can see there are a lot of data is available this all data are here you can see that as a json so you can see that this is a json data and it has a key post colon 25 this is the key okay and this key has this data okay this is the entire json you can see it has the data like post id the title of the post the content of the post it has different tags available okay and number of views as well like how many views for this post for the post 44 there are the different data and accordingly all these posts are available now to store the data in the redis json it's fairly simple you can see that this is a very simple command where you can just use json.sat command and after that you need to give the key what key that you need to store the data for suppose i am giving post colon one this is the key and after that you need to give the path for which particular path you are trying to store the data as you have mentioned dollar that means this is your root for this root in the post key you are trying to store the entire json and after that in the course you are giving the entire json object okay this is your entire json object so this is a particular path where you are going to store json so you are trying to store in the root path and this is the key okay this is fairly simple command you can use this command to store all the data now let's see the command for creating the indexes because this is the most important thing that we need to learn because after creating the indexes only we will be able to search on those indexes now to create the indexes it's fairly simple command ft.create okay so this is the command ft.create and after that ft.create you need to pass the name of the index okay so this is the name of the index that you are providing that i want to create the index with name post hyphen idx and then on on is the keyword that you have to use and on you need to pass on what you are creating the index so here you can see that i am creating the index on json but if you are using hash you can pass hash that you are creating the index on hash after that you need to define the prefix like for what prefix that you are creating the index so prefix and then you can see that you have passed one that means you are only providing one prefix and the prefix that you have provided is post colon so any keys starting with the post colon for that i am creating the index so suppose if i go here right you can see that i have a lot of keys here right with post 25 post 44 post 147 so these are all the keys available and for all the keys i have some data available so for all these keys i'm trying to create the index for searching so here i have defined so here i have defined that ft.create create the index with name post idx on json with prefix post colon so all the keys starting with post colon for that i am defining a schema okay now what schema i am defining i am defining the schema that dollar content in the post colon whatever the json that we are using in that whatever the dollar dot content is that is the path okay that should be aliased as content so if i go here okay you can see that there is a content so ideally when we traverse through json what what we do is we do via dollar dot dollar is your root and then what dot af and after dot whatever the property it is so after that content is the property so i'm defining that dollar dot content in the json referred to as content and after that what is the data type so data type is text so within the schema the first property that's dollar content as content 
that is of type text and i want to make sure that it is sortable so whenever the user is trying to sort this particular index should be able to sort sort those data as well after that another field we need to pro provide after giving the space so after that dollar title as title okay so whatever the dollar dot title is here dollar dot title i am referring to as title okay and then that is also type text okay then i am defining dollar dot tags this is dollar dot tags and you can see that this dollar dot tags tags is an array so i'm defining that this is array and i'm defining star means all the elements okay so dollar dot tags all the elements as tags so whatever comes inside this i'll be referring to as tags and the type here for this type is tag so tag is also one data type so i'm defining that this is a tag data type after that another property dollar dot views as views so we have one property views so i'm defining dollar dot views as views and the type is numeric this is a numeric field right so i'm defining numeric and i'm defining no index that means i don't want this property to be indexed okay so this is a simple index i'm trying to create so this is the index that i'm trying to create so let us go to our Redis inside. Let's go to the workbench. Okay, this is the command now. Let's try to go through the other commands as well. So what I'll do is, if you want to just see like how many different indexes are available. So for that, the command is ft dot underscore list. Okay, once you run this command, you will get to know that how many indexes are available. You can see that there is already one post idx available, which is this one that I had created. We will try, we will delete this and we will try to recreate. But this way you can get the indexes. Now, if you want to know that what this index has, so that also we can do using ft.info and then the name of the index that is post hyphen idx. Okay. Once we run this command, we will get the information about this index. You can see that this index is on JSON. Okay. And this is prefixed by post colon. So this index will run on all the keys with post colon as the prefix. And these are the identifiers. You can see that dollar dot content, dollar dot title, dollar dot tags, dollar dot views. These are the identifiers in the JSON. And those attributes are defined this way that dollar dot content is content, dollar dot title is title, dollar dot tags is tags, everything. Then type is defined that what type of content it is, text, text, tag and numeric and the weight you can see that there is a weight defined here so this weight or a score whatever you tell this is where you define like what is the weightage for this particular data type for searching based on this weight and score that you provide here the searching will happen you can give the data from 0, 0.0 to 1.0 okay any value you can give based on what you have the requirements but by default the values are one okay so by default the values are one and after that you can see we for the first dollar content sortable is true right so if i show you the command again i define sortable right so this sortable is true and there is no separator here and you can see that in the no index i have only one no index that is for the views okay because for that i had defined no index so this way you can see that you will be able to see the data of the index as well now if you want to recreate the index or create the index first you need to drop the index is if available so you can do ft.list you can check if the particular index is available and you can get that index and you can delete it or you can recreate so what i'll do i will try to delete this index so i will do ft dot drop index and then i need to give the name that is post idx okay and i run the command i'll get the okay that means my index is deleted now if i try to do ft dot underscore list i won't get any indexes you can see that there are no indexes so now let's go ahead and create the index so we'll type the command itself so we'll create the index ft dot create okay and there you can see that you will get the suggestion as well like what type of command it is okay how to uh, write this command but if you don't know you can also go to the documentation so let me just show you the documentation as well so you can see that this is the documentation ft.create index you can see that all the parameters and attributes that you can provide and what these attributes define that also you can see from here okay that the first index the index name to create you can you have to pass the index so after ft.create you need to give the name then you can define on what you need to create on hash or on json 
you can give after that you need to provide the prefix okay and then you need to provide the count how many prefix that you are providing if one then only one prefix if two then you can provide multiple prefix whatever you want next if you are creating for the different languages you can provide the languages as, as well like which particular language that you are preferring okay so you can see that every detail you can see here like what type of attributes that you are defining all the information you can see here so it's very easy to define from here okay so from here only i have gone through the code and gone through the example and i have created my index here so we will define ft.create and the name of the index will define as post idx okay okay and then i need to define the schema and field so before that let me just remove so what i'll do ft.create post idx is my name of the index then on on what i need to create on json i need to create then what is the prefix right because if you go here that's what we have to define right ft.create index on json then after that prefix prefix i have one count and then i will define the prefix that is anything starting with post colon okay after that you need to provide the fields so let's define the fields now so i'll define the fields with the schema and then i'll define if i go here in the keys this is the dollar dot content so dollar dot content as content i need to define right so i'll define here schema dollar dot content as content okay and then you need to define okay here you can see that schema after that field name as alias you need to define and after that you need to define the type either it's text tag numeric geo whatever it is it's a text so i'll define this is a text okay and then i'll define either want to make, make a sortable or anything no index or whatever the properties i need to define for the field i need to define that so for this i'll make sure this is sortable after that we need to provide the different properties now so let's define the different properties so now if i go here i have defined the content let me define for the title so i'll define title here now that dollar dot title s title this is a text property okay then i need to define the another property so let's go the other property i can say i can define for the tags tags right so i can define dollar dot tags and this is the array and for all the elements i need to do right so as i'll define this is a tags and the type is tag right because this is a tag property like if you have categories property or anything right for that you can define the tags so this is a tag property and then you can see you can define for one view so let's define for the views this is a numeric field so after that dollar dot views as views okay this is a numeric field so for this i don't want this views to be added in the index so for this i'll define no in index okay you can see that how simple it is to create the indexes once you have the command ready just execute the command you can see that the command is executed you got the okay if i again try to do ft colon list you will get the list and if i try again ft colon info sorry ft dot info and the name post idx and if i run this you can see that my entire index is ready i can see the index like whatever i wanted all the fields are up to that only cool right so you can see how easy it is to work with the indexes now let's try to do the searching on these indexes so let's see how we can do the searches so before that let's go to the documentation and see the search command so this is the documentation and if you go here this is the ft dot search command okay you can see that the command is really big and it's really simple trust me so you can see that it's very simple command ft dot search and then index that is the name of the index and then query okay simple and then there are different properties based on the different properties you will get the data so let's understand those so you can see that after ft dot search and you can see the time complexity is o of n okay so it's really fast so now for the index you can see that for the index you need to provide the name of the index in the query you need to provide the query okay and all the elements that you provide will be starting with the at the rate okay so you define that 
so we have defined that this is a content title tags and views too, right so to access all this we will be using at the red so at the red content at the red title at the red tags and accordingly okay so the query you can define you can see that if you define no content you won't be getting the data you'll be just getting the ids and these are all the different attributes that you can define accordingly you will get the data so you can see there are a lot of details you can pass the limits like uh, you want only data for a particular limit you can do the sorting operations and many things so you can see it's a very powerful search and you will get the data very quickly because all the data has been stored in the in memory only so let's try to get the data so the command is ft dot search okay after that you need to provide the index and the query so the index is post idx okay and the query so the for the query what i have to do is i have to define in the quotes and i need to define at the rate and then on which particular field i want to do the query so suppose i am trying to do on the content okay for our entire content so i'll define at the rate content and after colon i need to provide the content so suppose if we go here okay and suppose if we take this example post triple one and suppose we have the data as this much right jacob jacob hurries past the tomatoes and catches and everything blah 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 let me just copy hurries okay so i'll just pass that i want all the data which has hurries in it so if i just execute you can see that i got all the data you can see that i got post triple eleven as well because this was having that data right let me just give another thing manage okay let's run this there is no data is there anything else we can give let's see pose let's see earth you can see that we got the data as well now suppose let me just pass the you can see that you didn't get any results right why because if you go here you can see that there are a lot of data which has the in it right you can see the earth is there right so ideally you should be getting this record but you didn't get the record by just passing the because this the is a stop word right because there are a lot of words in the english that we use those are just a stop words just we just add those words to make a particular sentence so those words won't be used to search the results only particular words will be used and those words will be used as a stemming so suppose if you just pass manage then that particular manage will be passed through the stemming and using the stemming you can get the data based on the manage manager managing blah blah whatever the detail it is right so you get the gist so this way all the stop words will be ignored and for all the other words stemming will be done and after stemming whatever the data is there you will get all the records this way so after that if you want to again do any operation suppose let me just remove this and let me just do her is here okay because for this we were getting the data right suppose for this we have to do any other operations like we want to filter more data okay so suppose i want to filter data based on the tags as well so this has the tag as you can see it has three tags that is love crime and love and crime okay and this has two tags that is magical in english so i want all the records with the tags magical okay so let's see how we can do that after the first filter that you provided here give a space and give the another field so another field is tags so for the tags what you can pass and this tag is a property tag so all the property you need to pass in the curly braces so with the curly braces suppose i'm passing as a tag as magical okay so i'm just passing tag magical and if i run this i should be getting only one record which contains the data hurries in it and the tag is magical okay so i'm getting only one record here so you can see that how powerful search it is right so you can do a lot of operations here you can pass any records so you can do entire fuzzy search using this particular operations as well okay so using all this command ft search using ready search you will do you will be able to do all the entire fuzzy search search using the tags you can do the aggregations and everything so this was all the entire basics of how redis search works how to create the indexes how to do the search operation how to delete drop the indexes how to list down all the indexes and all the commands so we went through all the different commands so now you can easily go through all the commands and you can traverse through all the different contents available now what we will do is we will create the spring boot application where we are going to use the redis search and we are going to do the search engine type of implementation where we have a lot of data of the posts available and we will try to fetch all the different posts using this search functionalities
okay so it's going to be a fuzzy search it's going to be a search based on the different properties and we are also going to implement the aggregation so we'll get the aggregated data as well so we'll see all the functionalities of the redis search so let's go ahead and implement that so what you can do is you can go to the spring initializer to create the project so start dot spring dot io okay go to spring initializer and you can create the project or you can add the same details in your IntelliJ idea and you can create the project. So I'll create the project using the IntelliJ idea. So let me just go through the IntelliJ idea. Okay, this is my IntelliJ idea. Let's create the new project. So I'll create a new project. I'll create the project in the YouTube tutorials open. And I'll provide spring ready search. Okay, I'll give daily code buffer as a group name java is 11 and the java version is 11 okay i'll click on next here i'll add the lumbok dependency i will add the web dependency that's it let's create the project your project is created now we'll set up this project we will try to add all the packages and we'll create the file so let's go ahead and create the packages which we need so here i'll create the package i'll need the repository package to create the repositories i'll need the model package for creating models i'll need the controller package to create a controller then i'll need a service package and then i'll need a config package to create any configurations okay now these are the basic configuration that i've added now what i'll do is we will add the configuration for the redis so what we need to do is we are going to work with the redis search right so we need to connect our application to the redis right so for that there is a library client library available that is jedis so we are going to use jedis so we need to add the dependencies for that so let's go ahead and add the dependencies i will go to the pom.xml file and i will add the dependency here okay i'll add the dependency and the dependency is jedis okay and this is from redis dot clients okay i'll add the version as well and the version is latest 4.2.3 okay so the latest version i've added now what i have to do is i need to give the configuration so i will go to this application dot properties file and i will give the configuration for my host and port number okay so i'm just providing the redis host that is local host and redis post that is 6379 so this is where my local application local redis is working but you can directly connect to redis enterprise as well where you can provide the host and port number and you can also provide the credentials so you can directly provide all those details here so whatever is preferable for you you can go ahead and do that either the local or you can also directly use the redis enterprise so once we do this we need to add the configuration so let's add the redis configuration so i will add the new class that is redis configuration okay and this class is for the configuration so for that i will define this as a configuration i am using lumbok here so i will define the at the rate data properties here okay at the rate data annotation so whatever the properties i'll define we will get the boilerplate code for that here i'll define private string host and private integer port okay you can see that two fields i've defined but i need the details of these two fields from the application properties okay so that is host and port so for that what i'll do i will use the configuration properties here so i'll define configuration properties and within this configuration properties i'll define that what is the prefix for that so prefix is redis so what it will do is redis.host redis.port it will take from the application.properties file and it will assign those values okay so that thing is done here now we need to use the jedis to create the connection pool okay so we'll use the jedis pool to create the connection pool and we will pass this configuration so for that we need to define a bean so i'll define a bean here and i will define jedis pool and here what i'll do i will define return new jedis pool 
and here I need to define the host information and port information. Simple, you can see that the bean is created with the host and port. So at any point, we will be able to get the instance of the JDS pool directly easily. Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to store the data into our Redis. Okay, so whenever our application starts, we will dump all the data because we will mainly focus on the Redis search functionalities. Okay, so all the data we will dump into the Redis search. So for that, I have created a data dump file. So I will use that JSON file and whenever the application start, I will dump all the data into my Redis search and we will also create the index on it. If the index is already created, we will drop the index and we will create the index newly. So with this, you will be able to understand two things because earlier we directly created the index using the Redis CLI. Now you will also see how to create the index using the Java code as well. So it's a benefit. That's why I am trying to do that code. So what we will do is I will just add a file here. So let me just create a file. I'll create a file data dot JSON in the resources and I will copy the data. Okay. You can see that this is the entire data over here. This data is already available in the Redis search, but what we will do is I will do the code. So you will get to know the understanding as well, like how we are storing the data and how we can create the indexes as well. Okay. Now this is in the JSON format. So in Java, we work with the objects. So we need to create the classes to represent this and we need the repository layer as well to work with the Redis to store all the data, to get the data and whatever the things that we want to do. Okay. So for that, what we'll do is we'll create a model and the repository. So let's go ahead and create the model first. That model I'll define as a post. Okay. Post.java. I will annotate with other data. So we'll get the boilerplate code. And here I will define few properties. Private string. Post ID. Private string. Content. Private string. Title. Private. Set set of string okay this is tags equals to new hash set okay and private integer views okay so i've just defined all the properties which are there in the data.json okay post id title content tags views i don't want user id so i'll just ignore it i will add the code accordingly so it will ignore the missing fields okay so the model is created now for this model we need to have the repository as well so let's create the repository so i'll go ahead and create the repository that is post repository okay and i'll annotate this with repository and in this repository we will need the object of the JDS unified JDS so we will create the object for that so we will need unified JDS okay and we will auto wire this now this unified JDS if I open this it will have all the different methods to execute all our commands in the Redis. Okay, so we are using this. Now what we'll do is whenever the application start, we need to load our data. So for that, we need to have the command line runner. Okay, so whenever the application starts using the command line runner, we will load all the data using the from the data.json file. So if I go to my Spring Redis search application main file, here I can define that. So here within the main file, I need the object of a post repository that I created and the unified JDS as well and the data.json file access as well. So three things I need. So first let's get the access of those. So I'll define private post repository and I will auto wire this. Then I need private unified JDS and I'll auto wire this. And then I need the resources. Okay. So I'll define a resource. This resource is from org spring framework core.io and resource file and value I need to define. So from where the value will get. So value will get from you from the class path data.json. So we'll define class path colon data.json. 
okay so from here if in the class part data or json is there we will get the value from there so we got the post repository unified jdis and the resource file now we will use the command line runner to load all the data so let's do that so we'll define the command line runner load data method okay and i'll define this as a bean simple so this bean will be available when the application starts and we need to pass the argument so what i'll do i need to pass return arguments and within year i need to pass all the i need to do my all the code okay so what we will do here we have to do all the code so let's do that we will get all the data from the data.json file we will convert the json file to the object file that means the array of the post and we will store all the data into our redis okay in the redis json format so let's do that so define string data equals to resource file source file dot get input stream dot read all bytes okay we need to read all the bytes from it and we need to create the new string out of it so i'll just define new string from it okay so you can see that it's simple we just got the data here now after getting the data we need to get the object mapper to convert to object so object mapper equals to new object mapper dot configure now what we are trying to do is whatever the fields here right which are extra fields i need to ignore those fields so for that i need to add the configuration so i'm adding the configuration as deserialization feature dot field on unknown fields unknown properties right that i'm defining as false so that configuration is done now what i need to do is using this object mapper and this data i need all my post so i need post object all my post equals to object mapper dot read value read value from where data and then convert to post dot class okay so now from this object mapper i'm getting all my post in the array now after that what i need to do is i got all the post now i need to store all this post into my redis okay so for that what i need to do is i need to have a method that allows me to store all the data so for that let's go to the post repository and create a method so this is my post repository and let's create a method to save the data so here i'm creating a method public post save which will take post as the input p simple now what i'm trying to do is if p dot get post id equal to equal to null if there is no post id then i need to generate a post id because i need post id at any cost so what i'll do p dot set post id equals to uuid dot random uuid dot toasting so this is something that i have generated now what i need to do is this post i need to store in the json format in the that is json right so i need to convert this into json so what i'll do i'll use the json to convert this equals to new json object and then i will use jdis dot json set json set is a method that will allow to store the json data into redis okay so here you can see that you have to pass the key you have to pass the path and you need to pass the object okay so let's define that so i need to define the key so i'll define your key string key equals to anything starting with post colon plus p dot get post id so this is my key so i'll define this key here that i should use this key then after that i need to pass the object so i'll just pass json dot to json convert to json what my p object simple right now my entire object is converted to json and it's trying to store in this key post colon whatever the post id it is now what i'm trying to do one more thing is all these ids right all these ids which are generated i am trying to store all those ids into one set so i'll create a set and whatever the json ids are created i will store all those ids into my set now why i'm doing this is because whenever i want to delete, delete those i'll refer to set i'll get the id and i'll delete that key entirely that for that reason i am trying to store those data so 
what I'll do, I will just use Jedis dot s add s add is a method to add the data into set. So s add is a method. Now key key I'm passing as a post. Within this post, what I need to store, I need to store key. Simple, okay. So within this post, whatever the key is generated, I will store that key. So whenever I want to do any operation like delete, I can look through the set that is post. I can get the keys and I can delete the key. For that reason, I'm trying to store the keys in the set and then return P. Now you can see that the method is ready to store the data into Redis JSON. Now I will go to my Spring Redis search application again. Here I will look through and store the data. So here I will do arrays dot stream. I will stream all the post and dot for each for all the post. What I'll do, I will do post repository colon colon save. You can see that I've used the method reference here. So I can directly call the save method on the post repository. Okay. So for each and every post here, I'm doing the stream operation and for each and everything, I'm trying to store the data into Redis JSON in my Redis. Simple it is. Okay. So my all the data is now stored. Now, once the data is stored, what I need to do is I need to create the index so that I can use the Redis search functionality later. So now let's create the index. So for creating the index, we need to create the schema. That schema we need to assign with the index definition. Okay. So here if I go again. Okay. So here you can see that we had used the ft.create, create the index and within that we had used the schema. So we'll define the schema and this schema we will attach with our index. So that's what we are going to do. So let's do that. It's very simple. Okay. We are doing the same operation that you have defined here. Okay. So we'll define the schema now. We'll define the schema. You can see that the schema would be from the redis.clients.jedis.search. Okay. So schema, schema equals to new schema. And within this schema, we need to add the fields. So we'll do add fields. And within this fields, we need to add new schema.field. Okay. What is the field now? Field is field name dot off dollar dot content right because that's what we had defined here right dollar dot content as content so we'll define the same dollar content as content then what is the type then the type is schema dot field type dot text then you need to define is it sortable? Yes, this is sortable and false for not adding to the no index. Okay. So no index is false. That means this should be in the index. Okay. So first thing is done. Then dot add field again. Now directly I'll add the new text field. Okay. New schema dot text field. Then I'll add the new field that is field name dot off dollar dot title dot as title right you can see that we added the another field now let's add another field you can see that we are adding the same way that we have defined here in our command right we did the schema dollar dot content as content as a text as a sortable right that's what we did and now we did for the title dot title as title as a text now we are doing for the tags so new field field name dot off dollar dot tags this is array so array of star all dot as as a tags and then schema dot field type dot tag okay one more add field new schema dot field field name dot field name dot off dollar dot views dot as views comma field type dot numeric because this is a numeric field sortable is false and no index is true right because you can see that here we are defined as no index right so no index is true so you can see that your entire schema, 
definition is created right easily now let's create the index definition like we have to create the index on the json so for that we have to define index definition equals to new index definition and what is the type of the index so index definition dot type dot json okay dot prefix we need to define the prefix so set prefix new string array and here we need to define everything starting with the post okay so you can see that the same thing that we had defined here right that the index that we have to create on json and the prefix is post colon okay so we did this schema here this part we did this part we did okay now we need to create the index so let's do that so to create the index we need to use the command that is unified jedis that is jedis dot ft create okay you can see that that's the same method right that's the same command we are using right ft create so in this ft create what we need to pass is we need to pass the index name that is post idx then we need to do index options dot default options dot set definition and we need to define the index definition and then after that we need to pass the schema okay so this is the thing that we have to do you can see that we created a lot of things so we'll go through it quickly we got all the data from the json file we converted everything to the object from that json file okay we ignored all the properties which can fail that is the user id after that we converted all the data from here using the object mapper to the post after that we stream through it all the post and then we store all the data into my redis json after that we created the schema in that schema we define all the fields for which we have to create the index we define sortable no index and whatever everything that we needed which we saw earlier in this command same thing we defined here okay after that we define the index definition like my index should be on the json with the prefix post colon and then using the redjadis.ft create method we are passing that i need to create the index that is post idx and then i need to attached to it so i attached index definition with the schema so at the end this index will be created now one more thing i will do to make it robust so what i'll do is if there is any data i will wipe all the data and i will delete the index that is drop the index so let's do those two things so i will do post repository dot delete all this is the method now this method is not there so let me go ahead and create the method to delete all the post okay the method is created now what i will do in this method is as i have already added all the data in the set so i will loop through this all the keys and i want to delete so i'll define here that set of string keys equals to jedis dot s members s member is the method to get all the data of a or all the members of a set so s members and the name of the set so we'll get all the details here after that if keys dot is empty means it's not empty right then means we need to delete that means keys dot stream dot for each chat is colon json delete simple right i am looping through every keys and i am doing delete here after that i am doing jedis dot delete post as well okay that means i am clearing each and everything i am clearing my entire post set as well and all the keys as well all the json objects as well okay so now you can see that this delete all method is implemented and if i go here this method is deleted is completed now i will try to delete the index if the index is there i will delete it so simple jedis dot ft drop index okay you can see that this was the command and this is the method as well and you need to pass the name of the index idx okay i'll do simple thing i will just wrap around this with a try catch block and i will do s out index is not available okay means on index is already deleted so you can see that it's a simple thing whenever the application will start it will try to load all the data and everything now i will show you 
that what all the operations will happen. So for that, let's connect to our Redis CLI. So what I'll do, I will just open the terminal here. I will see that Docker PS, you can see that my Redis stack is running. Okay, so I will connect to it. So for that, I will do Docker exec command hyphen IT for the interactive mode to the Redis stack. And then I'll do the bash command. So you can see that I am inside my Redis stack now. Now the command is Redis CLI and then monitor. So we will monitor all the operations happen in the Redis. So you can see that now I'm monitoring. Now I'll go to my application and I will start my application. Okay, you can see that my application started. It's not able to connect because due to my machine issue, the Redis was stopped. But you can see that all the commands are executed here, right? You can see that the JSON delete happened, right? You can see that all the JSON delete happened on all the keys. Then you can see that the index is dropped. Then after the, see that you can see json.sat was happened. So data was stored and everything. Okay. You can see that the server closed the connection. So we will restart my Redis stack. So my Redis stack is restarted. Let me restart my application. So I'll just start my application again. So now you can see that the index was not available. So the index was created at the last. So if I go back again to my Redis insight. Okay. If I go to all the keys, if I refresh, you can see that all the data is available. And if I go here and if I do ft dot underscore list, I should be able to get the post IDX. You can see that the index is created. Cool, right? Now you can see that my data is loaded. You got to know that how the data is loaded, how delete works, how save works, and how the index creation happens, how the drop index happens as well using the code. Now we will implement the API for the search for this index. So we'll try to implement the search engine implementation for all this post available. So let's do that. Let's do one thing. Let's create the service. So what I'll do, I will create a Java class and I'll say, post service okay the service is created and i will annotate this with at the rest service okay so this is my service layer that is business layer and here i will need the object of the repository layer so let me just define the repository that is post repository okay and i'll auto wire this one thing done now we need to have a controller so let's go ahead and define the controller in the controller layer. So I'll define a class and I'll define search controller. Okay. This controller needs to have the rest controller annotation to make it a rest controller. And I'll also make it request mapping so we can directly call when the application starts. Okay. So my search controller is also ready. Now we will implement the Redis search with the pagination as well with all the filtration. Like you can search any data using the fuzzy search. You can search the data using the tags as well. And you can search using the different page numbers as well. Okay. So that's what we are going to implement. So let's do that. First thing we need is the object of a service layer, business layer, because from controller, we are going to call the service layer. So we'll define private post service. At the rate auto wire okay so this is auto wired now now what we'll do is we need to create a method so let's do that so before we create a method and whatever the data back we are going to pass we need to have the different model so i'll let me just create a model that will have the list of posts and the different page numbers and all those extra details as well so for that i will create a model that says page okay and this page will contain private list of post posts okay and then i will have private integer total page private integer current page and private long total Okay, so these are the properties that I have defined and I will annotate with other data for our boilerplate code and I'll also implement the builder pattern here so we can easily assign all the values and I will have the all args constructor as well. So you can see that it's a simple class, simple POJO where we have few of the details. So this particular thing we are, that we are going to use in our search controller. 
so public page we are going to use that this will return the page and this is a search method okay and this will be having the get mapping and i will define this get mapping here with the search okay and here we need to have the different properties different parameters we need to take right different request param so i'll define request params here so here we'll define request param name equals to content so first request param is content required is false okay and i'll define this is the string content this is the first request param let's take the second request param name equals to tags required is false and we can pass multiple tags here right so to get the multiple tags we will be using the set so here i'll be using set of string here to get all the tags okay i don't need comma here sorry okay set now after tags we need one more request param name equals to page we need page number and for here we need to have default value default value is one page number one and this will be the integer page now here i'll do just simple return post service dot search and here i'll define or i'll pass all the values that is content then tags then page okay simple thing that i'm doing here okay now search is not available right so let me just create the search method create a method search in post service okay and now here as well we need to call return post repository dot search and here we'll pass content tags and the page number okay it's simple thing so this search is also not implemented so we will implement in the post repository so you can see that the method is created now this is the most important part now let's implement this post okay now let's take long total num total page numbers okay so we'll get we'll use this field later total pages or total results actually how many total data it is equals to zero ideally it should be zero l right okay now i'll create the string builder object and this is my query builder okay so i need to build a query to pass okay so what i'm trying to do is whatever the search operation that we were doing here right you can see that whatever the search we were doing here like on which particular field that we have to do the search and what are the different fields that i want to do the search on that all properties or that are fields we need to pass so we are doing that so we will check here if content is not null then only we need to add this content or criteria for that in the string builder query builder right so we'll do that if content is not null and not content dot is empty okay then we need to append into query builder so we will query builder dot append we will do and the same thing whatever we were passing here right this way we need to pass the command the same way so we'll do that so we will define at the rate content colon plus content simple right now we added for the content now let's add for the set that is tags right so if so if tags not equals to null and not of tags dot is empty query builder dot append space because we need to pass the space after that right space at the rate tags colon and then after colon we need to pass in the braces right so braces we provided then after that plus plus after we need to provide the braces close as well and within here what we'll do is we'll do tags dot stream dot collect collectors to joining and we'll join using the pipe okay if there are multiple we need to join all them using the delimiter pipe so we are joining all those tags here this way you can see that tags is also done now let's do string query criteria 
criteria equals to query builder dot to string and we need to define the query this query is from you can see that redis dot clients dot jedis dot search query equals to null okay so we need to define query now so we'll define if query criteria dot is empty then query equals to new query simple okay else query equals to new query and we will pass the query criteria in this okay just simple null check here and now after that we are going to add the limit operation so we are passing the page number here right so for that page number we are trying to add the limit so we'll add query dot limit okay in this limit you need to pass the offset and the limit okay offset means which page number zero is the first page number that is zero offset and the total page or total count that we need so let me just create one uh, page size object as a static object so i'll define private static final integer page size equals to 5 okay simple thing so i'll use this here page size into page minus 1 and the page size okay simple thing you can see that we are just passing the offset the so first time for the page number one okay that is one minus one zero zero into anything that is zero so first time offset is zero and the page size is five. Second time page number is two so that means offset is five and page size is five so that means we will skip the first time five element and then we will get the next five third time we will skip first ten element then we will get the next five so this way the paging will happen here okay and now we need to find the search result so we'll get the search result from the in the search result object so you can see that search result is from the redis dot clients dot jedis dot search equals to jedis dot ft search we need to pass the index name that is the post iphone idx and the query okay so you can see that we passed for the search result then let's get the total results so total results equals to search results dot get total results so we'll get the total results here and from this let's calculate the total page number so integer number of pages equals to total result divided by page size this total results i need to convert to double and this entire thing I need to do math dot seal okay and cast to integer it's a simple thing okay now the search result will give everything in the documents so we need to convert everything from the documents from the list of documents to the list of post so suppose if I do here right search result dot get documents you can see that this get documents is giving me the list of documents so what i need to do is i need to convert this list of document into the list of posts so for that let's create a method to do that private method private post convert document to post okay and this will take the document and to convert this document to post we will again use the json okay and we will use string json doc equals to document dot get properties dot iterator we'll iterate through it we'll take the next of it we'll take the values from it and we'll do two string okay you can see that from the document we got all the properties we iterate through it we took the next we took the values and we converted to string now from this json doc we can convert to post so we can just define return json dot so from json from json because that's a json object right and we need to pass the string that is the json doc and we need to pass post dot class what we need in return okay you can see that this method will return or convert from document to post now this is this is a thing we need to use here so i'll just define here i need list of post that 
post list equals to search document search result sorry search result dot get document dot stream dot map and i'm using this dot convert document to post dot collect collectors dot to list and i mean everything in the list okay you can see that everything is converted now i can just do return post list sorry i cannot return post list right because we need to convert to the page so we will use return page dot builder dot build method and we will pass everything dot post to post list dot total to total results dot total page to number of pages right number of pages this should be n small right i this would be better so number of pages dot current page that would be page cool right you can see that how we got the data right it was very simple we got the data that is content tags and everything okay we created the query builder so whenever the fields are not empty we added in the query builder and that's the same thing that we added at the rate at the rate field name colon and the value of itself the same way in the query builder at the rate tags as tags it's the multiple fields so we added in the braces and we converted everything to the data separated by the pipe and we pass the values and after that from the query builder we created the query and we pass the data to it we pass the page number we pass the limits and we got the search results we converted the list of documents to the list of posts using the private method here and after that all the post lists we converted to the page object and the thing is done let's test this application for testing let's implement the swagger first so we'll go to the pom.xml file and let's implement the swagger here so we'll define the dependency and spring doc open api ui okay this is from the org.spring doc and the version is 1.6.9 this is implemented let me refresh my main one and let me restart my application you can see that my application is restarted right now let's go to the browser and let's go to the application that is localhost colon 8080 slash swagger hyphen ui dot html you can see that the page is open now and you can see that we have a search api right so you can see these are the properties now let's search for the same thing that we have searched here right that is hurries so let's write out let's define the hurries here and if i execute you can see that i am not getting any data because you can see that the connection is closed right so let me start my redis again okay and if i execute it again you can see that i am getting the data right you can see all this data now with the hurries and if i want to do with the tags right so if i add the tags here which are the tags available you can see that love so if i add love here make sure that now you see what is the url you can see the current is search colon content equals to hurries and page equals to one the moment i do execute here i'm getting one records and the url is at the red tags equals to love now if i want to do again add more string and if i do abc and i execute you can see that at the red tags is love is there and at the red tags equals to abc is there so this way you need to pass in the url make sure that multiple tags are passed as a set currently you can see that we are getting the data because any one of the fields it's matching right because we have passed the pipe operator if you pass any other values right if you execute you can see that you are not getting any data so this way you can see that you will be able to do the fuzzy search and using the tags as well so yeah, this way the data has been fetched from the redis search using the fuzzy search that is a full text search using the tags using the stemming operation so whatever the data that you are passing stemming is happening on each and everything and you're getting the data it's also doing this top word so whatever the words are not needed those will be separated out and it will only do the search based on the actual words which it needed which you need and it will also do the searching based on the scores based on the data that you provide the scoring for the search that you provide so you can see that how important and how awesome this feature is in the ready search and you can implement 
any kind of search functionality using Redis search for your application. Now let's implement the aggregation function. So let's go to the IntelliJ and let's go to the search controller and let's implement the aggregation. So for this aggregation, we would need the another field. So let me just create the another model here. I'll create another class. Okay, for this also I'll define data. For this aggregation, what we are going to do is we are going to find the aggregate data for a particular tag, like for a particular tag, how many posts are there and what are the average views for those posts. So suppose I have 10 tags available. So for those 10 tags, how many posts are there and what are the average views for those posts. So that's what we are going to do in this aggregation. So what details I'll be needing here to send back is tags first, then then total posts, then average views. Okay, these are the simple things that I will be needing. So let me go back to the search controller now and let's create the method public list of category list of category stats and I'll define get category wise total post okay this is the method that I am defining and I will just import the list here and this will be the get mapping category category wise post and now we will define the method that will be return in the post service dot get category wise total post okay this method is not available so we will define we will create a method in the post service okay and here as well we will do return post repository dot get category wise total post and we will implement this method in the post repository now here let's implement this method so here we need to use the aggregation functions right so let's define the aggregation functions here so we'll define the aggregation builder equals to new aggregation builder and in the aggregation builder dot we'll define group by we need to group by tags first right so we'll define group by at the red tags and here we need to use the red users now okay you can see you have to pass the multiple red users so we'll pass the red users like we need to count all the tags and we need to do the average as well based on the grouping that we have provided that is tags so we'll define red users like red users dot count so this is one of the red user that is the aggregation function count and all the counts i need to store at somewhere so i will store as number of post then again another reducers reducers dot average so i need to get the average of the views so i'll define at the rate views okay dot as i need to give the field name so i'll define as average views okay so you can see that it's simple thing we define the aggregation builder and in the aggregation builder we define that i want to group by tags and i want to use the reducer that is that is the aggregation function so first i need to count and that count i will store in the number of post variable and i need to do the average as well for the views and i will store in the average views simple thing now then i need to get all the data in the aggregation result so i'll define the aggregation result equals to chedis dot ft aggregate and i need to do aggregation on what that is the first index name so i'll pass index that is post idx and then i need to pass the aggregation builder that is the aggregation builder you can see that it's simple right we define aggregation builder and the aggregation results then i need to get all the data in the list of category states right equals to new array list. so i'm just defining the array list here now what it will do is 
in this aggregation results we will get the data in the rows okay we'll have the different roles so we need to get all the different rows we need to convert those rows from the documents to my category states and we need to pass okay so for that we will use the stream to convert those things so we'll use the long stream dot range from 0 to aggregation result dot total results okay dot map to object whatever the idx that i'm getting right index i need to convert that to the object now so i'll do aggregation results dot get rows of idx this idx should be integer so i'll cast the argument then for this i need to do for each now for each rows i need to do the operation okay now for each rows i need to add to the category list so category list dot add category states dot so what i can do is i can use the builder method to create the object so let me just go to the category states here and let me add the builder pattern and if i go back here to the post repository i can have the builder method okay so i can pass all the values get all the values here so what i need i need to store the total post so for the total post what i can do i can do row dot get long because it's a long and what would be the key total post the total post key is number of post okay so i'll get the number of post from here dot average views okay so row dot get double average views okay so i'll define the average views here now if i get the average here what it will be having is it will it can have many decimal places but i need to have only two decimal places so i will do the formation here so i'll define new decimal format and the decimal format is hash dot hash hash okay dot format so let me just do here okay so this is the format that i have applied here simple okay dot tags so here i need to define rows dot get string tags so you can see that it's a simple method that we have defined okay we are just streaming to everything and creating the object that we need and after that we need to return category list so you can see that the entire method is completed so now let me just restart our application so the application is restarted let's go to the browser and let's refresh the page and you can see that you have the new method here right so let's try this and if i try it out and execute you can see that you are getting the result you can see that you are getting the result accordingly like for the magical tag okay tag is a magical there are 28 posts available and the average view is 4.61 for the tag love there are 20 there are 44 posts available and the average view is 4.59 for mystery there are 22 posts and the average view is 7 so you can see that this way we will be getting all the tags with the total post and the average views okay so that's a simple command that you will be executing the same way how you will be doing in the cli so same way you have to build your code as well it's very simple so you can see that how easily we were able to implement the entire search functionality build the entire search engine for our entire data whatever the data you have you can implement the search engine functionalities using the ready search easily you can also do the aggregation operations for all the data that you have so whatever the statistics or the dashboard that you have to create you can create easily and all the searching functionalities quickly that you have to implement in your application you can do using the redis search so you can see that these are all the things about redis search redis index and redis json we covered everything using the code as well and using the direct commands as well now from here the next step would be for you to explore more on the different command arguments so there are a lot of command arguments that we saw right for creating the indexes for searching and everything so explore those functionalities and try to implement an application where you can use all those functionalities as well now as usual the entire code would be available in the github i will add the link in the description for you to check out if you guys enjoy this tutorial then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye